Welcome to the lesson of IELTS Academic Reading Passage 1. Today we are going to talk about task type of question, true, false and not given. Please do not confuse with yes and no not given. And I'm going to give you some tips and action plan for true, false and not given once again and with additional tips and information. So, we need to go directly to our task type of questions. Here it is. We do have questions from 1 till 6. And we need to pay attention for three paragraphs. Here it is. It means it will be spread out into three paragraphs two questions in one paragraph and then it will go forward. So you need to quickly skim the passage to get a general idea of what it is about and the topic of each paragraph. Do not worry about words you don't understand and don't spend too long trying to work out what they mean. It means you don't need to waste your time for nothing. If you read on, they may be explained anyway. Decide whether you have answers to the true, false or not given questions are in the first few paragraphs. As I told you previously, final few paragraphs were spread throughout the passage. A quick scan to locate words will give you this information. So first one. It's now widely taught, can you see this, widely taught, that humans reached New Zealand in the 13th century. Definitely, this answer will be on the first paragraph, even it will be not given a question, but anyway, you will have the location of this statement. But this is true information. So we need to go to the first paragraph to be clear how we found this information. So we do have IELTS Academic Reading Passage 1 under the title New Zealand's Early Crafts and Traditions. So we know the general idea. And uh, so we need to focus on the first paragraph, first and the second sentence. We need to download the material and upload our video to be more accurately do your exercises and practices. So this is true information. How is that? Because you need to find a reference to the century, 13th century, and underline any words in the first two sentences which are used instead of humans look for a phrase which means something similar or opposite to widely taught. So the first paragraph says the first groups of people to discover New Zealand came from Polynesia. Blah blah blah. Today the general understanding is that it was during the 13th century that their canoes eventually landed on New Zealand's shores. So also the arrival date used to be a matter of debate. Now the common belief, common belief, that is the first humans got to the New Zealand in the 13th century. This is common belief, widely taught. So the next one is the first Europeans to come to New Zealand were keen to trade with Maori. You need to highlight your key points. Keywords, Maori, first Europeans come to New Zealand, trade. All these words are hinting words. You need to find the locating words with Europeans, New Zealand, trade and Maori. Can you see any phrases that mean something with similar to trade or examples of things that might be traded? You need to go forward after the first statement. It means the end of the first paragraph. Okay, 
So here it is, this is not given information, but still we do have the location. So the first paragraph only explains when the Europeans first arrived, that they sought opportunities and how the Maori viewed them as strange. We are not provided with any information about the intentions of the Europeans and what kind of opportunities they were looking for. Then the next one, third one. Let me read for you this sentence. Members of Maori tribes were responsible for either tool or weapon making. So look for the locating words as tools and weapons. Does this part of the text mainly focus on the uses of tools or weapons or on the people who made them? You need to go forward to the second paragraph. Okay, because we have already completed with the first one. And here it is, once again, not given our option. But how is that? The second paragraph says, Polynesians, many points, were also skilled craftsmen. There is archaeological evidence that the tools they produced were of high quality. Craftsmen were also occupied with making weapons. We are told that those tools and weapons were made, but there is no information about any different groups of craftsmen that might have made them. Okay, go forward. And here it is, the force, a craft that the Maori once practiced. In New Zealand was making pottery. So here, hinting words are craft the Maori, practiced New Zealand, make it poetry, and very imperative word is once. Where does it talk about poetry in the passage? What does this refer to in poetry is an example of this. You need to go to the middle of the second paragraph and the last sentence. So this is false information, but anyway, I'm going to explain to you. So this is false, but how is that? Because the second paragraph explains that some crops were no longer done in New Zealand. Pottery is an example of this, despite the fact that the clay could easily be found in the new country. So, Although the Maori had the opportunity to do pottery in New Zealand to do, they did not pursue it. Great, this is false information because this is contradicting information. Let's go forward to the fifth statement. Weaven baskets and mats was seen as a form of decorative work by the Maori. So here it is highlighted and evident words. This is true information. But how is that? Because you need to read the explanation about decorative work in the third paragraph. Surely, does it include information only on carving or does it include weaving too? You need to focus on the third paragraph and the first sentence. Let's go. And here it is. So, the third paragraph says that the Maori word for decorative work is whakairo, a term that can refer to bone, wood, and greenstone curry. The same term can also apply to weaving, the crafting of, for example, woven baskets and mats, all required knowledge and skill. In other words, decorative work includes was the carrying of different materials and the weaving of different objects. So this is absolutely true information. Let's go forward to our last statement. It is used to be common for everyone in Maori tribe to wear greenstone jewelry. As you can see, this is false information. You need to locate jewelry in the third paragraph. Is there any information in this part of the passage that, that shows what kind of Maori more jewelry? We need to go to the third paragraph, definitely. 
and the last two sentences. So, this is false information. The third paragraph explains that because green stone was rare, any object made of it was a prized possession. Such rare objects were owned only by the few people of high status rather than low-ranking members of a tribe. So, that's all for this session. I hope you enjoyed learning. Thanks for watching.